I'll spare you the whole gory story of why I uprooted my whole life and my son to move across the country 30 years ago. Suffice to say, my husband preferred sleeping with his secretary to parenting his own child. All my friends were estranged or had taken his side in the marriage. My parents were dead. I had no support system. So I looked for a new home. My only criteria for a place to live were three things. One, it had to be safe. Two, it had to have other children. Three, it had to be cheap. Clanton seemed to fit all three points. It seemed like a wholesome little town, full of families with children who formed a tight-knit community. From a distance, it looked very much like what I wanted. The very first crack in the facade came the day I went to view a house. The realtor was almost too bright and bubbly, but I wrote it off as an amateur goof. She babbled on about the school and the proximity of the house to the two parks, and did I know the HOA president had worked on two different boards of education before retirement. I tuned out her chatter almost immediately. Because as we walked in the front door, I was slapped in the face with a huge, creepy clown mural. How to describe it? I'm sure anyone with even a passing interest in serial killers has seen John Wayne Gacy's paintings. These were very much like that, oddly disgruntled expressions, disjointed anatomy, gaudy colors. It made your skin want to crawl right off your back. The realtor saw my face and laughed. The kids love them. I'm sure you'll get used to it. What struck me even then was the finality of the statement. I was in no mood to get used to Gacy's twisted leftovers. I made mental plans on how to paint over it before I was even two steps in the door. The rest of the house was nice came with a washer, dryer, and dishwasher, nice little green square of a yard, a screened porch, and a little swing set. I almost asked if they got their milk in bottles like the Andy Griffith show, but I bit my tongue. Except for the front hall, it really was exactly what I was looking for. So, what do you think? The realtor asked breathlessly once we got back to the front door. I shrugged. I'm still weighing my options. The realtor got this desperate gleam in her eye. Oh well, I'm allowed to knock 15000 off the asking price. Well, I... 20000 She walked forward and grabbed me in a hug, squeezing more than I thought was strictly called for. We'd love to have you here, Denise. Please, think very carefully about it. I shook her off, trying to laugh the awkward away. I'll think about it, but I really must go. I made up an excuse and drove out of there. It was the weirdest thing, but as I took the one road that seemed to serve the entire town, I swear everyone who was outside stopped to wave to me. Men watering their lawns, women on walks with their dogs, even the mailman doing his rounds on foot. It was almost like a joke. I was a little charmed by it, but... It was also kind of creepy in a way I couldn't put my finger on just yet. Well, after I picked up my son Joshua from daycare, I laid out my finances and did some homework. The house in Clanton was the only place I could move and hope to have a little bit of safety bubble left. I rationalized away the little things I experienced the first time. Any place with a homeowners association was bound to be a little odd. The clouds were probably done by somebody's art school dropout kid who needed cash. It was a small town with a close community. Wasn't that what I wanted? The Saturday I rolled into town with my son and a U-Haul truck, I started noticing more things that were just off. For starters, I hadn't looked closely at the town's sign when I had driven up the first time. 
Today I saw the weird clown motif extended even here. Five brightly colored circus goblins propped up the sign and leered at me as I drove past. I spotted more clowns on my way further into town, hiding in building murals and peering out of bushes. Despite how disturbing I found it all, I tried to talk myself past it. Lots of towns had a motif, like a local animal or a plant. Just because it was creepy to me didn't mean the people who lived here were creepy for liking it, right? I talked myself out of a lot of things in my time, but this is probably the one I regret the most. It was on the drive that I realized that there were, really was only one road through the town that would wound up in a big spiral. Sure, it had little cul-de-sacs branching off here and there, but the road was a black artery winding down into the center of town. To get in or out, you would have to drive in an ever-widening loop, no shortcuts or straight lines. Josh looked apprehensive as we rolled up to the house. There's a new place, buddy. Like it? He gave me a little shrug. He didn't understand why we couldn't live with daddy anymore. And God help me, I couldn't just flat out tell him that his dad didn't want anything to do with him. So I'm sure in his head he thought I was uprooting his life for no good reason. You'll like it here, you'll see. I lied. I tried to keep the front hall clear as I unloaded the truck, already making plans to buy drop cloths and paint. Josh took one step inside and frowned at the mural. What's wrong, big guy? I tried to keep an eye on him as I balanced our fish tank on a bookshelf. I don't like it, Mommy. They're scary. I settled the goldfish into his new home, walked over, and kissed Josh on the top of his head. Don't worry, sweetie. I'll take care of them. We only got three boxes in before I heard a knock on my open front door. An older guy, gray chest hair, leaked out of the top of his open golf shirt, grinned at me with a mouthful of blinding white dentures. Mrs. Hughes, he held out his hand. Spencer Jackson, president of the HOA. Call me Spence. It's actually Miss. I held out my hand. Instead of shaking it, he kissed it. I discreetly wiped it on the back of my shirt. I'm divorced. Oh, he looked oddly pleased at that. Well, we're still glad to have you. And what about you, sport? He bent and put his hands on his knees to talk to my son. How do you like your new house? Josh did the kid thing where he mumbled his answer into the floor. Clowns are scary. Spence laughed. <laughs> Come on, little man. All the other kids in town love clowns. You're not a Brady cat, are you? I have little patience with people who talk down to kids. Even less with those who diminish their own fears to their faces. I dumped my box and walked over, strategically inserting myself between them. Hi, Mr. Jackson. It was certainly nice to meet you, but we are really busy unpacking, so... He smiled past me. I've got a little girl your age. Name is Missy. I'm sure you'd like to come and play with her. I put my face between them. Spence. Do you mind? He looked up. All oh, right. Just arranging a play date with the little guy. I'm his mother. All play dates arranged will be with me. I started wheeling a hand truck towards him, backing him up to the front door. I'll get back to you once we've settled in, okay? He sidestepped me, leaning over, keeping an eye contact with Josh. See you soon, right, son? I snagged his arm. Excuse me, you need to leave. He looked at me like you might look at a dog begging for scraps. Oh, right. I'll see you both around, Mrs. Hughes. He saluted Josh and walked out, knocking over a stack of books I had left by the door. After he left, I went to Josh and hugged him, telling him he shouldn't listen to strange grown-ups and that he wouldn't ever have to be around the clowns. 
both statements turned out to be a lie in the end. I wish I could tell you. I listened to the first instinct and turned around. That I loaded everything back onto the truck and left. But I was used to second-guessing myself after years of living with a cheater. And so I unpacked what little was left of my life into the house with that ghastly clown mural on the wall. And to this day haven't left.